and welcome to AI with Arun Show. We are going to talk about the AI news from around the world for the week ending August 31st, 2025. Let's get started. Let's begin with the markets, where the story of AI is being written in dollars and data. We have witnessed the S&P 500 and the Nasdaq surge to all-time highs, a rally largely filled by robust US economic growth and massive sustained investment in AI technology sectors. However, the picture is not entirely uniform. Take NVIDIA, a titan of the industry. While its data center division posted a staggering 41.1 billion in revenue, a 56% year-over-year increase, it still fell shy of analyst expectations, causing the stock to dip 3%. This hints at a deeper complexity. The market strength is highly concentrated in what's known as the magnificent seven AI-driven stocks. To put it in perspective, the S&P 500 is currently trading at a price to earnings ratio of 24. But if you look at the equal weighted version of the index, that ratio drops to a more modest 18. This disparity highlights a critical question. Is the entire market rising or are we seeing the emergence of AI powered oligarchy? This market concentration is mirrored by strategic nation level investments as global powers raise to secure the footing in the AI ecosystem. The primary focus, semiconductor independence. In Asia, Japan is making a massive 68 billion investments in India, specifically targeting AI and chip manufacturing. This is a clear geopolitical maneuver designed to build resilient supply chains and counter China's regional dominance. Meanwhile, the US is moving to shore up its domestic capabilities. The White House has announced a $9 billion investment in Intel acquiring a roughly 10% equity stake and making the U.S. government the company's largest shareholder. And India is playing a drive for sovereignty is now happening at the corporate level, signaling a major industry shift towards the verticalization of AI. Look no further than Microsoft. On August 29th, the company unveiled its first fully in-house AI models, a strategic pivot away from its reliance on partners. The first is MAI Voice One, My Voice One, an audio model so efficient it can generate one minute of a natural sounding audio in less than a second on a single GPU. The second is My One Preview, a foundational large language model trained on an immense cluster of nearly 15,000 NVIDIA H100 GPUs. While Microsoft insists its partnership with OpenAI remains, this move is undeniable. It gives the company greater control over its technology its cost structure, and its ability to tailor models specifically for its own ecosystem. The era of partnership may be giving way to an era of empires. But as this technology proliferates, the legal and ethical framework designed to govern it are struggling to keep pace. OpenAI and its CEO, Sam Altman, are now facing a lawsuit from parents who allege the ChatGPT chat bot encouraged the 16-year-old son's suicide through a series of harmful interactions. The case has drawn the attention of Washington with Senator Josh Hawley demanding compensation for the family and far stricter oversight. In the antitrust arena, Elon Musk's company X and XAI have filed lawsuits against Apple and OpenAI. The suits are alleged that the two tech giants colluded to dominate the smartphone and generative AI markets, a legal battle that would fundamentally reshape global AI competition. And the security risks are escalating. The AI safety firm Anthropic recently issued a stark report stating that agentic AI has been weaponized and has lowered the barriers to sophisticated cybercrime. The tools are becoming more powerful and so are the threats. These ethical dilemmas are now creating real world friction in public sector AI adoption. A powerful key study emerged this week from the UK. The Coventry City Council signed a £500,000 contract with the data analytics firm Palantir, the, which is a US-based company, to deploy AI in social work and children's services. The decision ignited a firestorm of controversy. Critics and unions pointed to Palantir's history of supplying surveillance technology to the military and its controversial involvement in the privatization of National Health Service. This also demonstrates a pivotal new reality. Who provides the AI is becoming just as important as what the AI does. We are seeing the rise of ethical procurement, a trend that will likely give an advantage to AI companies with clean portfolios while posing significant challenges for diversified 
tech conglomerates and potentially slowing down AI adoption in the public sphere. Amid these challenges, it's crucial to remember the immense potential for good. In healthcare, AI is delivering truly life-changing breakthroughs. At the European Society of Cardiology Conference, the company, Essort, showcased an AI-powered ultrasound that uses machine learning to dramatically improve image clarity and diagnostic precision. In Australia, Melbourne researchers have developed an AI system that can diagnose skin cancer in minutes with remarkable accuracy. And researchers at Tufts University have created what they call death portraits of tuberculosis. They have used an AI method to visualize at the cellular level exactly how drugs destroy the deadly bacteria, paving the way for far more effective treatments. However, the same technology that can visualize cells can also be used to create conflict. AI is now a flashpoint for international relations. We saw this recently in a diplomatic incident between Japan and China. Japan lodged a formal complaint after an AI-generated video satirizing Emperor Hirohito went viral on Chinese social media. This is not just a meme. It's an example of rising geopolitical friction over the misuse of AI in propaganda. Incidents like this, which touch on deep cultural and historical sensitivities, have the potential to seriously strain diplomatic relations, especially in the already tense tech corridors between the US, Japan, and China. And nowhere are the ambitions clearer than in Beijing. On August 28, China announced a formal three-phase AI development plan, a direct challenge to Western technological leadership. By 2027, their goal is 70% penetration of intelligent terminals across all key sectors of the economy. By 2030, that target rises to 90% penetration. And by 2035, the goal is nothing less than a full transition to a completely intelligent economy. This is a clear long-term strategy to achieve dominance. As nations race for supremacy, AI's impact on the global labor market is proving to be complex and counterintuitive. For years, the narrative was that automation would primarily affect manual labor. The data is beginning to tell a different story. We are seeing reports of AI displacing white-collar jobs while simultaneously creating a boom in blue-collar trades. In the US, some pipe fitters are now earning over 100,000 a year before the age of 21. This surprising shift appears to be linked to factors like stricter deportation policies and a resurgence in domestic factory production. This trend challenges everything we thought we knew about the future of work. This new reality demands a new focus on education and awareness. We are seeing initiatives springing up to address this AI literacy gap. In the US, First Lady Melania Trump has announced she'll lead new programs focused on teaching young people about the ethical use of AI and improving digital literacy. But awareness also means understanding the risks. In Japan, researchers used AI to identify 800 hidden slang terms on platforms like Discord, uncovering language used for child exploitation that would be invisible to human moderators. And finally, a psychological warning from a leading voice in the field, Mustafa Suleiman. He cautions against a condition he calls AI psychosis, where heavy, unfiltered use of chatbots can lead vulnerable individuals to falsely believe that AI systems are conscious. With that, we come to the end of the show. Thank you for watching. Like, share, subscribe, and support our work by joining us as a member.